Hello, my name is Allison Carmen, and welcome to my podcast, 10 Minutes to Less Suffering. And the name of today's podcast is A Reason, Season, or a Lifetime. I know many of us have heard this expression before in reference to people coming and going from our lives. Although I never really connected with it, I recently started to think about the relationships I've had in my lifetime, especially with my ex-husband-to-be. And after thinking about that, I find my mind always goes towards the end. I think because it was so painful and I felt so betrayed, I don't think a lot about the relationship. And I think that's what happens often. The pain overshadows everything else. Pain rings loud. And it rings loud because often we don't want the situation to be the way it is. We trusted somebody. Our heart hurts. And it's hard to accept that this relationship that was so positive in our lives is no longer in our lives. And that's why I started thinking about the idea of a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And I decided to look into it a little more. So when I went online, I actually found out that this idea came from a poem. It actually allowed me to think about things in this context. And it's very soothing and it's very healing. So here's the poem. People come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. When you figure out which one it is, you will know what to do for each person. When someone is in your life for a reason, it is usually to meet a need you have expressed. They have come to assist you through a difficulty, to provide you with guidance and support, to aid you physically, emotionally, or spiritually. They may seem like a godsend, and they are. They are there for the reason you need them to be. Then without any wrongdoing on your part or at an inconvenient time, This person will say or do something to bring the relationship to an end. Sometimes they die. Sometimes they walk away. Sometimes they act up and force you to take a stand. What we must realize is that our need has been met, our desire fulfilled. Their work is done. The prayer you set up has been answered, and now it's time to move on. Then people come into your life for a season, because your turn has come to share, grow, or learn. They bring you an experience of peace or make you laugh. They may teach you something you have never done. They usually give you an unbelievable amount of joy. Believe it, it's real, but only for a season. Lifetime relationships teach you lifetime lessons, things you must build upon in order to have a solid emotional foundation. Your job is to accept the lesson, love the person, and put what you have learned to use in all other relationships and areas of your life. It is said that love is blind, but friendship is clairvoyant, author unknown. And when I think about this poem and I start to think about my relationship with my ex-husband-to-be and I look at it that he was in my life for a reason, it makes me feel different about my marriage. I think about how I wanted to get married. I wanted to have a family. I wanted to have that experience. I wanted to build a life together. And I did. I had all the experiences that I wanted. And then one day it unexpectedly ended. And when it ended, all those things left. And I think that pain took center stage. But I guess four years later, the pain has softened. And perhaps there'll always be some level of disappointment. But to think about we were together for a reason. And we had two beautiful daughters who are such lights in the world. And I think about all the things I've done these last four years, how much I've grown, how much joy I've had, how much I've expanded. And maybe I needed to grow and and maybe this is what I needed in my life. But going back to that idea that there was a reason, it just softens it and it gives me a place to stand. And yes, I wish the end could have been handled much better with more maturity and more thoughtfulness, but that's not how it happened. And if I keep thinking too much about that, then I'm going to forget the reason. I'm going to forget all the good things. And then that's going to be the thing that blocks me from moving forward. And you might have a long-term relationship that you feel the same way. So think about that. Think about if you could put it in a context of a reason and look at all the good things you had and look at all the benefits and look at all the positive things that happen as well. Let's not get stuck on the bad when there was an experience that also had good in it. And then the relationships that we had for a season, a week, a month, a year. And again, those could be intense and they could be joyful. And then the end could be explosive. There could be a disagreement or sometimes you just lose touch. And if we feel wrong by the end of the situation, if we didn't get everything that we wanted, 
We don't want those thoughts to take over the entire experience. And it doesn't mean our pain's not real, but there has to be a path for us to appreciate what we had and still honor it and maybe look at our life differently. I think we all have this expectation that everything in our life will last forever. We want that in our jobs, our relationships, our financial situations, but things always change. And you know, what really makes me laugh is that sometimes the hardest relationships are those we have for a lifetime. If you think about your family members or long-term relationships, they could be most challenging and they never go away. But even those, we need to look at the lessons and the growth and why we have these people in our lives and how to make them the best that we can. And again, the reason I'm bringing this all up is that this poem could really set us in a new mindset that instead of thinking about things lasting forever, instead of holding on so tight, instead of grasping for something that no longer exists, if we could see it differently, if we could see that there was a reason or a season and pull out the good and remember that and hold that in our heart and not just the end, not just the bad, not just the things that went wrong. We are going to experience our life differently and we're going to heal differently and we're going to move forward differently. There's just something about putting this in this context and accepting it is a real freedom to move forward. And I think there's something about allowing us to view everything on a whole and not just the anger and not just the end, but remember it all, the experience, the lessons, the good things. It softens us. It heals us. It opens us. And it makes us more honest about our role in the situation and the other person's role and the good and the bad and the ugly, whatever it is. I know since I read that poem, I actually feel more peace inside my heart because I'm seeing my marriage on a whole. Because for a long time, I forgot all the good. It doesn't change the end. It doesn't change my feelings towards him. But it does allow me to view my life differently. It allows me to see the victories and the joy and all the good that was created. So if you want to give this some thought, think about a relationship you no longer have in your life. Try to remember the good times. Try to remember the laughter. Remember the lessons. Remember all that it created. And let that part be a memory as well. And then try to think about the fact that maybe this relationship was in your life for a reason. How am I better off today? How am I further on my path? Maybe I don't need that person or that thing in my life anymore. And maybe I don't know what's next in my life. But if there was a reason, that might make you feel better about moving forward. And you could also think about Maybe this relationship was in your life for a season and that was all it was meant to be. And you can think about all the same questions and the relationships that are there for a lifetime. Well, sometimes that's a lifetime of work and sometimes there are a lot of challenges and a lot of lessons, but also you could look at those relationships that way as well. When I think about difficult relationships I've had most of my life to look about what they've given me and what I've learned, it does, it softens it too. It doesn't feel good to walk around feeling bad and angry all the time. For some reason, it's so easy to forget the good. It's so easy to forget the benefits because again, pain can be very loud, but we can bring that back. We can bring that back by choosing to see things differently. We can bring that back by looking at, is there a reason? Is there a season? And we can change things and we could change how we feel and we could change how we look at it and we could change how we move forward. And again, I understand how endings could be harsh, especially if it's not what we expected. And we feel like throwing it all away and throwing it all in the garbage. But it really is worth taking the time and looking how wonderful certain things were, even if it causes missing, even if it causes pain. When we bring that back, we bring good back to our lives. And we give things meaning and we give our lives more purpose, even if it's something that already passed. Don't just live in the bad. There's a world waiting for you. There are relationships waiting for you. A job is waiting for you. A life is waiting for you. We just need to hold our heart in a way that allows it all to happen. So maybe everything that's happened in our lives is for a reason, a season, or maybe a lifetime. Either way, keep dancing with this keep experiencing life, keep processing the pain, keep holding the joy and staying open 
because for all you know, maybe the best is yet to come. Thank you for listening to this podcast today. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you could email me at allison at allisoncarmen.com. If you'd like to buy my books, The Gift of Maybe or Year Without Men, they're available at all major bookstores and online retailers. And if you like this podcast, you could subscribe and leave a comment.